Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the uh, first breakout session of this morning's Outron Technology Day. Uh, my guest this morning uh, for this session is Miguel Vieira, who is the uh, Professional Services and Pre-Sales Manager at Outron Managed Solutions. Good morning, Miguel. How are you? Very well, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I gather you've been with the company for a long time, since <laughs> 1996. That's quite a, quite a record. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah. Uh, been with the company for quite a few years, in different positions, but yeah. Fantastic. And, and a lot of that time spent dealing in, in the retail sector. All of it, actually. Fantastic. Uh, different um, fields, you've got yeah. quite a presentation for us this morning to go through, so uh, yes. without, without further ado, I'll hand over to you and let you uh, get on with it. But uh, I'm fascinated to hear, and I hope our, our, our viewers are as well. Thank you very much. All righty. Um, so we had a look at some global trends uh, at the end of 2019, 2020. And this is actually a slide that I prepared just before we went into lockdown. And interestingly enough, a lot of the points are actually still very much valid. Uh, so I've kept them on the slide. And um, our solutions that I've, that I've prepared to present are also sort of in line with, with the, the retail trends. So just diving into it. Um, Point number one, the best retailers have been using customer-centric data to deliver hyper-personalized uh, retailers can now get a very in-depth understanding of their consumers' behavior habits. It's from me to we, or from we to me, sorry. Um, Bopus, so uh, buy online, pick up in store, uh, has seen a huge uh, uptake in the last uh, few months, um, and that continue to help the bottom line of those retailers who can deliver, uh, that are able to deliver on logistics and speed. Uh, planet, uh, planet, planet friendly movement, uh, consumers and shoppers uh, with, are shopping with emotion uh, and values as much as their wallets, the conscious consumption. Uh, social media has become embedded in many uh, customers' purchasing journeys. Retailers need to actively engage with these tools, and consumers increasingly use them as a primary interaction point with brands and companies. So social currency will be, the, uh, will be more transactional. Technology will strip friction from brick-and-mortar retail. Uh, at the forefront of this tech forward shift to address traditional pain points will be automated checkout free convenience stores and frictionless physical retail. Uh, retailers are actively experimenting with experience in the most powerful tool to win the retail customers and moving away from the model of in-store online retail strictly focusing on products being sold, the rise of, uh, the, uh, rise of experiential. The debate has moved on from the cost and scalability benefits of being in the cloud and data analytics, the fourth industrial revolution, and retailers will need to incorporate a holistic approach that integrates AI automation, human intervention, and data sharing to provide personalization and predictive interaction across multiple channels, smart retail. So, before we dive into some of the solutions that I've prepared to, to show you guys today, I'd, I'd like to go over a bit of the POS architecture that we have in uh, Pioneer clients. Um, what you're looking at is a very simplistic view, um, and it's not meant to be extremely technical. Unfortunately, we haven't got the time to dive into it. But I'd like to just give you a bit of an overview of what most large retailers are, are experiencing these days. Um, when they have new solutions coming in and the sort of challenges that they have. So roughly around 25, 30 odd years ago, you had your point of sale system, just a little blue box over here. And you might have, depending on the size of your organization, and maybe had a back end ERP. And your point of sale system was, uh, I'm not going to call it basic, back in the time it was, it did everything it needed to do, but it scanned, it, uh, it allowed you to tender a transaction, you could pay with cash or check, a coupon or a voucher. Uh, you might have had sales people enabled. You might have had certain specials that were able to run. Uh, you might have even had accounts running. But around about 25 years ago, uh, one retailer decided to integrate EFT into point of sale systems. And uh, that little block over there had to be integrated into the point of sale system and tightly coupled into it. So that development took some time and eventually that was released and it was pretty much picked up across all retailers and it's now quite a, a normal standard. Um, 
in a few years later, around about 2000, JPOS and OPOS became a standard. So just to explain that a little bit, it's a standard for talking to peripherals like printers and pole displays. And uh, before that, if you had a new printer or a new screen or a new device that you wanted to talk to, you literally had to get a developer to sit down with the manual. You had to develop the code to talk to that printer. And only after that code was released out into the field could that device actually be used. So JPOS allowed the point of sale operating system to write code once that would then be able to be used across any device and any time going forward without the developer ever having to make changes again. So as the years progressed, point of sale systems became more advanced, had a lot more features, value added services were added in, uh, gateways might have been added in, uh, recon and settlement became a, pro uh, a process that POS had to be involved in, loyalty systems came in, promotion systems, uh, slap on to all of that. In the back end, you had a CRM, you had BI and big data, possibly uh, analyzing all of the data coming out of it. And all of this has been running on your your typical operating system or your hardware. And typically, the sales life cycle for, for hardware in retail is about 10 years. And the, point of, the actual point of sale solution would last around about as much. Um, I think the challenge is that it, as you're looking at, at this block at the moment, if you had to take the EFT block out of uh, Retailer 1 and try and integrate it into Retailer 2, it wouldn't be a straight drop into their system. Because they have a different point of sale system and different interfaces, it takes time to develop that communication. And because each of those points are touch points into the point of sale, every time you make a change on any point, the entire system needs to be checked. Not only that, but if you have a look at the operating system and the hardware, Every time it has to be tested, it has to be tested on every operating system and every piece of hardware that you have within your environment. So that means any new solution coming into your store would take possibly months, uh, and in some cases, unfortunately, years before they're actually seen at the retail pause. And I've seen this uh, as a, a quite a big bugbear in the, the, the retail market, where a lot of people with solutions want to bring it in, but don't understand that it takes time to get it integrated. And unfortunately, the teams that are available can only handle so much work, which means only certain projects can be done within a certain timeline. But yeah, hopefully that gives you a bit of an understanding of the complexities uh, in POS development and why it would actually take so long to actually do an integration with a piece of software. So keeping that in mind, a lot of the solutions that we've put together are, have interfaces which easily jump into uh, the, different, uh, the different segments that we have on the, displayed on the screen here. And we've, made it, we've tried to make it as simple as possible to do that integration. So the future of retail. Uh, buy online and pick up in store, or BOPUS as we like to call it. We've seen a huge upsell in, uh, in the solution in the last six months, uh, with some retailers reporting 20% and above increase in turnover on their BOPUS solutions. Um, retailers in market segments that have never even considered online shopping saw interest in having the solution in place. And Altron Managed Services is currently actually working with a client to set up the online store. And it absolutely makes sense. The cost of setting up an online store versus uh, setting up a brick and mortar site just makes sense. Um, uh, what I, I would advise if, you, if you're a client that doesn't actually have an, uh, a BOPA solution yet, do a very low-tech uh, low dry, uh, dry run. Uh, literally use WhatsApp or just a small group of target people and just see if there's an interest for it. Um, you don't need to go high-tech. Uh, don't need to spend a lot of money. Just see if there's interest. Uh, like I said, uh, a client that we're working with was in uh, the lower segment, and they would have never thought of using uh, an online store eight months ago. But it, it turned out to be something that their clients actually enjoyed using. So the smart trolley of the future, um, what we've done is we've taken a mobile shopping solution and attached it to a trolley. We built in some RFID scanners into the trolley. And basically, what this allows you to do is have a mobile self-checkout solution. So you can push a trolley around the straw, take items off the shelf, and put them in the trolley. And as you do that, uh, it picks up the items that you're actually putting into the trolley. 
You're then able to, at the end of the transaction, you can finalize uh, on the, the actual trolley, take your goods and leave the store. Obviously, that's a very simplified version of, of how it actually works. Um, but there's options to increase that, uh, that functionality. Um, with Bluetooth wayfinding, things like facial recognition, uh, facial payments, uh, data analytics. Uh, these are all things that could be available with a solution, and we'd be happy to sit down and, dis and discuss the solution with you. Self-checkout, um, although still not mainstream in, the, in this country, I have seen a lot of retailers doing their own version of it. Um, overseas, uh, our partners have indicated that there's been a huge uptake on self-checkout. Uh, even with reduced staff uh, in a store, all SCO lanes are available. Uh, with six lanes, you only require one person to run it. So meeting that frictionless requirement is actually becoming a little bit easier with self-checkout. Um, relatively cheap modifications were made to, uh, to meet social distancing uh, overseas, um, with most retailers just installing a simple little uh, Perspex screen between their devices. Um, and cleaning the screen in between customers. So rather quite easy to use. Altron Cash Kiosk is a full-fledged cash managing or cash handling solution that manages the cash and the customer interface. However, where a normal machine like this would interface with a bank backend, we've interfaced a Postillion package as a broker for the transaction. This means that retailers uh, using Postillion uh, can use their current infrastructure to host a money dispensing solution via the infrastructure. Uh, the solution can easily be white labeled in any retail environment. Uh, some of the advantages, you can pull some of the customers that would have clogged up your, your queues uh, out of that queue and into up to an ATM, well, uh, a machine. I need to be careful not to use the word ATM. <laughs> up to a machine that will allow them to withdraw cash. Uh, cheaper rates at this, at this device compared to a standard cash dispensing solution, uh, better cash management within a retail store, and value-added services can also be added to the solution, which is a, a feature that we're currently working on. Software-defined store is a solution that's available through our partner and currently available overseas. Uh, not yet deployed in the country, but basically what it does is it, is it virtualizes a retail store or the store of tomorrow with some great benefits. Um, I think the two of the main ones is the re reduced cost per lane in hardware requirements for the POS. Uh, you no longer need a hard drive and you don't need that much processing power. So you can actually use that 10 year old piece of equipment that you have um, in your store uh, and you need to refresh. Um, uh, once, in, once the solution's installed, uh, upgrading to a platform like Windows 10 64-bit um, is possible without any hardware issues. Uh, because, you can t because it's virtualized, your point of sale is uh, your piece of hardware at your till is actually just uh, a screen into your till. So swapping between Windows 7, Windows 10, and an updated application is as e simple as clicking a, clicking a button. Ultraviolet solutions, so they, they are currently widely used in retail, but more as a, a fraudulent note detection solution. Uh, this technology has been around for more than 50 years uh, and used in retail. However, not in the terms of what I'm trying to present today. So UV lighting is actually commonly used in water sanitation to, uh, to purify water killing 99.99.9% sorry, of germs and viruses. Um, we recently actually received an accreditation from a university in America stating that the COVID virus can actually be killed uh, with UVC lights. Um, so with that in mind, um, 
we've looked at solutions for retail which are currently available through a partner of ours, but we are also looking at a local solution um, to build a similar, uh, a similar sort of, or similar sort of offerings, let's put it that way. I think some of the nice things of, uh, about the solution as well is that no harmful liquids are required, which uh, in turn end up damaging your equipment, but also um, the amount of time that uh, you need to keep a liquid or a chemical on the surface to actually kill all viruses on it is far longer than the amount of time that we actually normally keep the liquid on. So it's a great way to sanitize uh, retail desk space, let's call it, uh, and keep it clean. Uh, so coming soon, we are currently working on a cloud-based solution. Um, cloud-based point-of-sale solution, sorry, which targets the tier two and lower markets, which is not something that we've normally done in the past. But basically what we're trying to do is give you a solution in a box. So you would be able to purchase the software that would manage your store, it would manage the back end of your store, it would run on a device uh, which we can supply and maintain for you. It would come with uh, transactional switching and it will come in at a, at a device as a service cost. Uh, we're trying to work on a, a, on a good model that will give uh, new startups the flexibility to open up a store without huge overheads and unforeseen costs. So, um, yeah, it's an exciting uh, development and currently something to be working on, hopefully to have it ready within quarter one. So thank you for your time. And if there are any queries uh, around any of the, the, the subjects that I've spoken about, sorry, we, we can't go into great detail with absolutely everything, but you can send any of your queries to Ultron Events at ultron.com. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the uh, second session in this morning's uh, Outron Technology Day brought to you in association with Brainstorm. Uh, my name's Adam Oxford. I'm going to be your host for the next 40 minutes as we're joined by uh, our speaker, uh, Miguel Vieira. Miguel is the uh, Professional Services and Pre-Sales Manager at Outron Managed Solutions. Uh, and I gather, Miguel, you've, you've been with the company for quite some time, haven't you? Yes, yeah, since 1996. 1996, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of years watching change in South Africa <laughs> and, and digital transformation. <laughs> Definitely, yes. Uh, I bet you've got some stories to tell. <laughs> we do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'd love to hear some of them uh, in, your, uh, in your presentation on, the, uh, on transforming the future of retail. Uh, but just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. I'd like to uh, invite the audience to ask questions throughout Miguel's presentation. There's a little chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, at the end of the presentation, in about 20 minutes or so, we'll be uh, going through as many of those questions uh, as possible. But uh, in the meantime, Miguel, over to you. Thank you very much. So yes, um, we're going to start off today by having a look at some of the global trends. Um, the trends I'm going to be showing you um, were picked up end of 2019, early 2020, and were ready for our presentation, which was going to be around March, which for obvious reasons uh, didn't happen. I've kept the presentation pretty much the same. Um, I think, uh, by and large, these have been affected, maybe not in the ways that we, we thought that they would, but they've, they, I think they're still relevant. Um, so let's just have a look through them um, from we to me. So the best retailers are using customer-centric data to deliver hyper-personalizations. Retailers can now get a very in-depth understanding of their customers' behavioral habits. Bopus, or buy online and pick up in store services, aren't new, but they will continue to help the bottom line of those retailers that can deliver on logistics and speed. And it's a solution that absolutely makes sense these days. Uh, it's a low cost uh, multiplier for your, your current estate. Uh, conscientious consumption is an interesting point. Uh, it's the planet-friendly movement. Uh, consumers are shopping with emotion and values as much as their wallets, um, which are all interesting points to make. Um, if we have a look at our, our next point, which is social currency uh, being more transaction, transactional, social media has become embedded in many customers' purchasing journeys. Retailers need to actively engage with these tools uh, as customers increasingly use them as a primary interaction point with brands and, and companies. If we look at frictionless physical retail, um, technology will strip or uh, will reduce the friction from brick and mortar 
all the, the, the forefront of this tech forward shift is to address traditional pain points. Uh, these being uh, or sorry, being addressed through uh, automation, uh, checkout free convenience stores, and the like. Um, the rise of the ex experiential retailers are actively experimenting, uh, experimenting sorry, with experiences uh, as their most powerful tool to win and retain customers and moving away from the model of in-store and online retail, strictly fo focused on products being sold. The fourth industrial revolution, the debate has moved on from the cost and scalability benefits of being in the cloud to data analytics. And we're seeing quite a bit of a rise, uh, or quite a bit of a rise, in retailers looking at large data. Smart retail, retailers will need to incorporate a holistic approach that integrates AI, automation, human intervention, and data sharing to provide personalized, personalized and predictive interactions across multiple challenge, uh, channels. So I'd like to start off uh, or just go through the point of sale architecture that we'd find in most large retailers these days. Uh, I've often found in the, in the work that I do that a lot of people get frustrated that they don't see new technologies coming to store very, very quickly or new solutions. And there's often, there's a reason behind that. Those that work in this, in this field understand the pain points. Those that they report to, I think, understand them, but they also need to balance business needs. And those completely outside of this, this process sort of uh, don't really understand it, uh, but feel the pain points of it. So if we have a look at this, and we have a look at about 25 odd years back, uh, most re large retailers would have had the little blue block uh, being point of sale and a back-end ERP solution. And roughly at about that time, uh, a large retailer uh, went out and integrated a third-party solution, which was EFT. And that allowed your point of sale system to now uh, accept bank cards as a transaction uh, or as a, a tender media. And at that time, you could only pay with cash, check, uh, a coupon, or a voucher. Uh, your point of sale system was very basic. Uh, it could scan. You might have been able to run certain specials, but it was re relatively limited. Uh, you could have maybe had a salesperson or accounts, that sort of thing. So uh, compared to the function, rich functionality available today, it was fairly basic, but it was meeting the requirements back then. Um, a few years later, um, a standard called JPOS or OPOS was introduced, and this basically meant that POS developers didn't have to write code for every little piece of hardware that they were talking to anymore. They could write a standard set of instructions, and you could then talk to uh, any printer that you basically wanted within a retail environment where previously this used to take months and months and months of development, testing, and release to actually get a new piece of printer working because you just couldn't get the old one anymore. And as the years progressed, uh, new services, all third parties started coming into the mix. Value-added services, gateways, uh, recon and settlement uh, functionality became sort of a part of the data that was being created out of POS. You have loyalty system, promotional systems that all came in and were all bolted on to the current point of sale system. Now the challenges that comes out of that is every single item that had been bolted onto the point of sale there uh, is a third party vendor or largely a third party solution which needed to be integrated. And the moment you touch anything in your point of sale code, you need to test everything that's connected to it. And for every operating system and every piece of hardware that you have the solution running on, you need to duplicate that testing effort to ensure that when you release, you don't have any assholes going out in the field. No one enjoys going into a store and standing at a till for five, 10 minutes while they try and reboot the system to get it up operational again. So it's something that's strictly avoided within the, 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 the field. Um, if you have a look at the little blocks on the side there, CRM and big data, those are uh, things that came in in the last 10 years, um, and sort of outside of the scope, um, but obviously just as complex and tied into the point of sale system. So all the, this, uh, all the point I'm trying to bring across is that the amount of time that a new solution takes to come into a retail store is often impacted by the amount of development, testing, 
and release time required in order to get those solutions out into the field. And it's something that a lot of people don't understand, but it's unfortunately a process that has to be followed when working with point of sale solutions. So moving on to the future of retail, I've got some uh, solutions that we've looked at uh, and I'd like to present. Uh, bearing in mind, we don't have a lot of time to dive deep into this, these solutions. If there are any queries, please post them uh, in the chat box and we can go through them. Uh, and there is an email at the end of the slide as well. If you'd like additional information, we can certainly uh, provide that to you. So BOPUS, buy online, pick up in store. Um, we've seen a huge upsell in the last six months. Uh, some retailers have seen as much as 20% and above increasing turnover from their BOPUS solutions. Um, retailers in market segments that have never considered online shopping saw interest in having the solution in place. And Ultra Managed Services is currently working with their client to build up a, a telemade solution for them. Um, and really, I believe that this is uh, a solution that every retailer should be considering if you haven't already done so. Uh, the cost of setting this solution up versus setting up a, a, a full store with staff and complement pales in comparison. And you're basically giving your customers access to your entire product range. Um, if it's something that you, 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 you haven't done, uh, I would... Uh, possibly even suggest a low-tech solution, just with a small, uh, small base to see if, if there's interest in your, in your particular market and segment. Uh, and then take things from there. You don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money, but you can actually get something relatively simple set up quite easily and, and working within your environment. So smart trolley of the future. Um, what we did here is we took a mobile shopping solution and we attached it to a trolley. Uh, we built in some RFID scanners, uh, and we've made a portable self-checkout solution. So a customer can come into a store, identify themselves on a, on a device, uh, take a trolley through the store, pick up items off, place it in the trolley. It's automatically ta uh, tallied onto the, the, the tablet uh, facing the customer. They can then uh, effect payment at the end and take their goods and leave the store. Uh, obviously, a lot of uh, tech and technology I'm not able to go into uh, when discussing this, but uh, I think this is a great solution going forward. Uh, certain markets will certainly be benefit from something like this. And there's also technologies that we can add into this and things that we can look at in the future. Uh, things like Bluetooth wayfinding, uh, facial recognition, facial payments, uh, switching for, for the device, transactional switching, data analytics uh, for the customers actually going through your store, uh, and so on and so forth. So self-checkout, um, certainly not a new solution uh, in the rest of the world, but certainly something that uh, I've seen South African, or South African retailers looking at uh, and experimenting with over the last few years. Um, internationally, with lockdown, uh, our partner has uh, reported a huge increase in self-checkout usage. Um, one of the nice things that I really liked about the solution is even with the reduced staff in store, which we saw uh, during the middle of lockdown, uh, where stores could only run a 50% capacity, you could still have 100% self-checkout usage. Uh, you only need one attendant to every six lanes. So it, it, just, ma it just brings that frictionless experience and, and makes it so much real in, uh, in your store. Um, some relatively cheap modifications were, were, were done to meet social distancing. We had some clients installing uh, a little clear perspex screen uh, to separate devices. Uh, and then obviously wiping down of devices as customers move on, or possibly a, a UV solution, which I'll discuss a little bit later on. Uh, the Altron Cash kiosk. This is basically a full-fetch cash handling machine that manages the cash and the customer interface. But where a normal device like this would, would speak directly to a bank backend, we've integrated uh, Postillion, which is used by most large uh, tier one retailers. And that now manages the backend transaction. So effectively, what this means is you've got a cash handling solution, but you've got uh, the, the infrastructure 
and the cheaper rates that you, that you have available within a, a retail store. You, is, you also get uh, better cash, hand, uh, cash handling, and we are looking at adding some value-added services to the solution, which is coming soon. One of the uh, nice things as well about the solution is if you have a lot of customers in your store who are clogging up your queues just there to withdraw money, this can sort of pull those customers out of that queue and, and get them to a device that can service their needs. Software Defined Store um, is a solution that is available worldwide and in South Africa through one of our partners. It hasn't been released in the country as yet, but it is a solution that we are looking to bring in. Um, well, into a client. Um, there are some, but basically what the solution is, is the virtualization of your retail store. From your actual retail point of sale systems to your back-end systems. Um, the, some of the brief benefits is the reduced cost per, uh, per lane in hardware and the ability for you to be able to reuse your old hardware. Uh, because the, the system can, or the solution can run on technology or pieces of hardware that are essentially 10 years old, you could quite easily install Windows 10 with the solution in place on a piece of equipment that's 10, 15 years old. And you wouldn't have any hardware constraints and you can quickly switch between Windows 10 and your latest solution or a previous solution. Um, but yeah, a lot of information uh, I'm leaving out. Unfortunately, we haven't got the time again to go through. If you'd like some more information, please let us know. Ultraviolet solutions. Um, this one's quite an interesting one. Uh, it's ultraviolet solutions have widely been used in retail, but more from a fraudulent note detection uh, um, solution. The technology has been around for quite some time, uh, over 50 years. However, what a lot of people don't know is that UV lighting is actually used to sterilize and to, pure and to kill most germs and viruses. And it's used in water sanitation quite regularly. Um, it was recently accredited uh, in the States with being able to kill the COVID-19 virus, as well as uh, many of the other strains. Uh, within about four minutes, it's known to kill about 99.99% of all germs and viruses. Um, Ultron Managed Solutions is currently working on a robust solution for very phones, which is, we believe, a, a, a strong touch point uh, within the retail environment. But we have options available uh, with a partner for other types of solutions like kiosks, uh, ATMs, screens, and you can see a, a very phone type solution there on the right hand side as well. One of the nice things about the solution is that no harmful liquids are required, um, which are largely ineffective because you need to keep that liquid uh, or on that surface for quite some time to actually kill the viruses and, and, and germs that are on it. Um, whereas the solution can, can just continue to work and clean your devices constantly even while you're not there. Uh, some coming soon. We are looking at building a cloud-based POS solution. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to give uh, startup companies and uh, sort of lower tier businesses the option of purchasing a device which will be a store-in-a-box type solution. It will give you a device which we can manage for you, which will do your transactional switching, it will manage your point of sale within the store, but it will also manage your back-end system as well for you. Um, we're looking to do, the, the, do this, as I mentioned, as a de uh, device as a service, so it will be a basic cost for six months, so you know exactly what you're getting in for, and after six months you can return the device uh, or go on a month-to-month -month contract. Um, so it's a set figure that you can, you can count on for at least six months. And yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that's the email address if there's any queries uh, that we can come back to you on. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Miguel. And, Thank you. Uh, uh, I have to say, I, I'm very impressed because it's always much harder doing these things in these, these virtual <laughs> environments and, and virtual studios that we're in now. And uh, I know when we, we were originally talking about this day, it was planned to be a big physical event and, and, and then COVID hits. And, and I have to say, I mean, this is the first time anyone's seen my legs in six months because <laughs> I'm usually behind a webcam at home when we, <laughs> we do these things. Um, uh, and on that note, I mean, we, we, you know, we, you, you talked a lot about um, uh, the the solutions you've got for dealing with new safety regulations around COVID and so on. Uh, and I think you mentioned a few figures at the beginning of the presentation there. I mean, what, um, you know, how big a driver has that been for investment in new retail solutions? 
So it's been interesting. Um, the last few months, we've seen a lot of interest uh, from retailers in a lot of different types of solutions. And I think um, a lot of retailers were a little bit nervous, obviously, with the impact of lockdown to their businesses and nervous to spend money, but wanting to see a lot of solutions. So we've been doing a lot, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily selling a lot, but we've been doing a lot uh, the last couple of months. Um, some of the big winners uh, being the buy online, pick up in store. Um, uh, UV solutions, I think, is something that would uh, would also benefit very, very nicely over the next next few months, once we get a, a nice solution in place. And um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and and I think that the, the, the buy online, pick up in store, I think, is really interesting because what, what what I got from your presentation is that there's a lot of choice. You know, mm. retailers have got uh, a lot of tools to 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 deploy now in order to to drive those changing or, or to meet the changing demands of consumers, I should say. Um, and, and I know one thing that, that you found is that it, it's not limited to the high-end middle-class stores, is it? You, you've, seen, you've seen this change happening at all levels within the economy. Correct, yes. Uh, we've actually had a client uh, targeting the lo uh, lower LSM. And eight months ago, if you had said an online store, they would have probably laughed at us, but yeah. now very keen and very interested in setting up their own store. They, they ran a, a limited trial and had very positive feedback. Fantastic. And, and are you seeing, um, you mentioned uh, 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 self-service tills and checkouts uh, in the presentation. Obviously, mm. uh, I, I go back home to the, you can tell from my accent, I'm from the UK originally. <laughs> I, I go back home every now and then. Uh, and it, you're hard pushed to find a teller uh, in a supermarket these days. But presumably, you know, when people look at localizing the solutions and finding the right fit for their customers, it's not going to be one size fits all, is it? They're going to want to look at the different uh, yeah, options. Yeah, um, it's, it's a very large solution. It's been around for uh, almost 25 years, almost as, <laughs> as much as I've been in retail. So it's evolved, uh, it's grown nicely. Um, I think it suits uh, the tier one market perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, its initial setup is uh, unfortunately a cost, but that's why it suits a tier one market because you can get the numbers out there and then you can get the return on your investment. But I think it's a great solution. Um, uh, it, will it replace uh, cashiers and tolls these days? I don't believe it will. I think it's a good complement. Um, what interesting what we found is uh, the cost of uh, handling cash in the solution sort of pushed the cost of the solution quite high. Mm -hmm. um, so should we, we go out, we would probably recommend EFT as, as a mm -hmm. payment solution for, for this device. And, and that in itself is a, a really interesting conversation. I mean, have mm -hmm. you seen growth in, in EFT and contactless payments and, and uh, electronic payments across the, 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 the market as well? So uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, cash is still king in South Africa. Pretty much. Um, I think we have seen uh, so some clients uh, definitely seeing an increase in, in uh, card usage. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, I think a, a large segment of the market is still reliant on cash. Mm -hmm. So I can see we've got some questions coming in from our, our audience there, and, and I do encourage you to, uh, uh, to pop your questions into the chat box, and, and we will try and get through as many as possible before the, uh, before the end of this session. Um, and uh, one thing that, uh, that somebody's mentioned that I think is really important uh, and at the heart of all these solutions is, is data. Um, and how do these tie in with strategies around business intelligence and, and big data gathering and so on? Are you seeing uh, retailers start to change their thinking in terms of what they have access to and how they can use that data to, to meet customer needs? So it has seemed to, to be a big buzzword in the last couple of years. Um, uh, I have seen customers looking, starting to look at their data. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually got a, a company within the group that specializes in big data analytics. And we're currently working with them, with a retailer, in, in putting a BI solution into retail. Uh, I think when you talk retail and you talk South Africa, it's always niche. Mm -hmm. uh, it's never quite the same as what's being done overseas. So it kind of has to be customized to every retailer and every market segment that they're working with. And obviously, uh, according to what their requirements are. But I think it's definitely something that every large retailer needs to, needs to start looking at. And I, you know, I, I keep hearing that message that what we do in South Africa is always slightly different to the rest of the mm. world. Um, I mean, how, how involved do you get in, in the solutions design process? I mean, what, what do you bring to the table in terms of being able to, to, to uh, 
bring that knowledge from overseas and, and, and look at how it fits the South African well, market? Well, we, we use um, uh, a lot of our partners overseas to bring uh, solutions in. Hmm. And then my, my own team uh, and ourselves work with the client in order to build the requirements that they have. And we try and draw on the experiences that we've had over the last couple of years and also the experience that the client has. I mean, a lot of these retailers have uh, staff that have been in, in, in the business for many, many years and know their client and know, and know the, the, the layout. So it's basically just working together as a team to try and customize a solution that's not only targeted to, to the, the retailer, but to his customers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can see there's a question in the queue. Can, can we see the smart trolley solution in action? <laughs> uh, <I'm not> so <laughs> Yes, uh, we've, we've built a, a proof of concept solution. Um, it's currently at our offices in Joburg. Mm -hmm. So yes, if, uh, if uh, the customer would like to see it, um, we can definitely arrange something. Fantastic. Um, we've got a question. Uh, somebody's, somebody's asking about the cloud-based uh, point of sale, which I, I think you mentioned you're uh, bringing into South Africa over the, the next few months. Um, how do you handle deployment of that? I mean, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the process that a retailer would go to? So um, we're still six months away, uh, roughly. Uh, in getting the solution in. Uh, it's actually less, sorry, time seems to fly in lockdown. <laughs> so it's less than six months. Um, but um, we're looking at the various models of actually selling the solution. So we would have sort of an online uh, store where you could just purchase the solution yourself and then run it on your own device. Uh, but you could also uh, purchase the solution and the device mm -hmm. for us to maintain for you or just purchase the device or you could uh, purchase the software online, purchase the device, and purchase transactional switching. So everything will be in a box, uh, which is obviously the goal we'd like to get. You have a set, a set fee for all of your transactions, your fees, you know exactly what you're paying and what you're getting mm -hmm. for the next six months. Fantastic. And obviously, you know, at the moment, uh, you mentioned you know, times are tight and, and, mm. and people are wary about making investments. How do you build that business case and start showing return on investment um, you know that these these solutions are going to pay for themselves. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a tough question to answer, and uh, we're not we're not six months from now. Um, we've looked at the market, we've looked at the needs in the market, and we believe that the solution would work well. Um, and I think it's in the numbers. Uh, we had a look at, at the amount of retailers that are available, and there's a large se uh, segment of the market that we, that we as Ultron Managed Solutions aren't playing in, in the retail space. And this is the solution that we believe will actually get us into that market. Fantastic. Um, this is a very, very interesting question uh, come up uh, about uh, retail property owners and, and, and mm. what their role is to play in the... Uh, the, the deployment, development, deployment, and investment in new solutions. I mean, can you see sort of property owners getting involved with shared resources for uh, tenants within there? I'm sure that something like that could happen. Um, uh, the the solution that we have was designed to 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 plug into multiple retailers, mm -hmm. so uh, it could very possibly be used as uh, in a centre sort of thing. So you could walk into multiple stores. Um, Obviously, integration needs to happen, uh, and there's different complexities with different clients, but it's something that could work. Um, these days, anything's possible with enough time and money. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm personally really, really intrigued and, and would love to hear more about the, the UV solution particularly, because mm. obviously uh, you know, we're, we're familiar with UV for checking uh, for fraudulent banknotes in stores, but how, how, how do you sort of see that being deployed in stores? Is it, is it a standalone device? or So uh, there are various options available. Um, UVC lighting is the one that's required in order to kill viruses and germs. Mm -hmm. um, but prolonged exposure can actually be quite harmful. So what we've, done, uh, what we've done with this solution is when it picks up movement and the movement stops, in other words, you've played around with the screen and you now move away, the lights now come on. Mm -hmm. And they come on for a certain predetermined time. But the moment anyone comes up to the screen in that time and touches the screen again, the lights will go off. Mm -hmm. So you're protecting your customers and your, your cashiers working around the device. Mm -hmm. And uh, the nice thing about it is uh, if a virus or germ takes uh, four minutes to, to die under the light and you have two minutes under before it gets broken, two minutes later when the light, uh, when the light comes back on for another two minutes, that virus is now effectively killed. So it, it ramps up 
uh, or the time adds on, sorry, mm -hmm. and it effectively very much cleans the device all the time. And you can even set the device to come on every few hours if no one's actually been there. So anything that was maybe in the air and landed on the device can actually be cleaned mm -hmm. off. And, and, I mean, do you, see, do you see that sort of investment in safety features as being a, a differentiator for retailers? I mean, is, is, are customers yeah. thinking, you know, they like to think this shop has UV lights, I'll, I'll go there because my card scanner is going to be clean? That kind I think of um, we, if the awareness is made out in the market mm. uh, that UV lights is actually very effective, mm. um, I think it definitely could be. Um, I've seen retailers doing some... I won't mention names, but doing some interesting <laughs> modifications to their point of sales to try and uh, keep uh, keep the, the devices clean, mm -hmm. uh, which hasn't uh, some has worked and some hasn't really worked too well. So yeah, fantastic. Um, a really interesting uh, question that, that's come up. I mean, for, for me, I do a lot of work in the startup sector mm -hmm. uh, and love seeing new entrants to market. I mean, how do startups talk to, to Outron? How do you look at what, what's new in the market and coming through? And So uh, um, this, this I think through our media channels is probably mm -hmm. going to be the best bet. Um, uh, like I said, our, our previous solutions have largely been targeted at the, the larger retailers. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to diverse a little bit and, and target lower end retailers. Uh, with the cloud-based pod solution. But uh, yes, uh, our marketing uh, online, our website, uh, those are the best ways to get a hold of us and, and get information on the solutions that we have. Fantastic. Uh, and, and another question that's come up, just asking, asking a little bit about, uh, may, maybe for a little bit of clarity about the difference between on-site and cloud. Uh, do, you, do you offer on-site premises, cloud-based solutions? Um, you know, where, where are stores in that, in that journey? So... Um, We've, uh, we've been using partners uh, and some of the big guys out there, AWS and Azure, for our online uh, data storage uh, and solutions. Um, and we're finding that a lot of retailers are already, uh, have already integrated into Azure and, and into AWS for some of their solutions. I can't say I see uh, that I would see an entire store running on AWS, for instance, uh, anytime really soon. Mm -hmm. I th um, but I, th uh, I think retailers have seen the benefits of the cloud and are certainly moving some of their, their, their solutions into the cloud. Fantastic. Thanks. Um, and one of, the, one of the, other, the other things that you talked about and uh, I'd love to hear a little, a little bit more detail about is also the, the, this notion of the, the software-defined store and uh, hardware agnosticism. Uh, and mm. that, that provides... Presumably, I, I provided, assume it provides a very cost-effective uh, path for deployment of these kinds of cloud solutions. Definitely. Um, it's a very interesting solution that we picked up uh, late last year mm -hmm. um, through one of our partners, NTR. Um, the solution is, uh, is available to clients here in South Africa. We, uh, the, there is obviously some integration work that needs to happen. Um, but uh, we're seeing a lot of customers at the moment, uh, both in the banking and the retail uh, sector, uh, taking a lot of strain replacing their older hardware, uh, re re upgrading to Windows 10. 64-bit mm -hmm. uh, has been uh, a bit of a swear word these days <laughs> with uh, all the new hardware only supporting 64-bit solutions. So a lot of retailers are being forced to, to upgrade to newer hardware, which is a costly, uh, costly experience. Uh, retail hardware is generally hardened to survive the, the 10 years that you need it to do. Uh, and for that reason, it is more expensive than a, a standard little desktop PC. Uh, it also needs to be available for a good several years before the next model comes along. So it's, not, it's definitely not a, t a typical desktop PC. Um, but yes. Um, yeah, fantastic. Good solution. But, but again, it's not a not a one size fits all solution. I know uh, uh, we've spoken in the past about uh, retailers who are doing uh, complete upgrades and, and 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 rip and replace of everything they own, and finding that that's also for them a cost effective solution. I mean, difficult calculation to make. I think. Yes. Um, yeah, I think every retailer needs to look at their environment mm. and what they have. Um, it's not a, a one solution. F uh, one solution fits all, um, but it is a solution that can be fit into uh, even partially into almost any retailer that we have in the country at the moment. Fantastic. Um, one thing I'm, I'm quite curious about. Um, I think you know. I, th I think I think we've got the, the 
the clear vision that you have for the, the store of the future and mm. that as, as a technologist, uh, you know, we can see uh, where resale is going into the cashless, uh, uh, contactless, uh, <laughs> self-service checkouts, uh, online store of the future. But <laughs> maybe that's overstating it a little bit, so I, I do apologize. <laughs> that's fine. But, um, how much how much this still needs to be done around consumer education and and, and how how much you've spoken a little bit about about lower lsm stores starting to adopt these technologies and so on mm. how do how do how do retailers bring their customers along with them on this journey it's uh, it's an interesting uh, question and i think it's something that retailers uh, need to consist, uh, constantly always be doing um, through their various channels. Um, customers are becoming more and more aware. Uh, smart devices are becoming a lot cheaper these days. Um, I know certain retailers who, who target uh, lower end LSMs and, and cellular devices are doing exceptionally well uh, mm -hmm. with high device uh, sales. So it's a medium to, 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 to reach out and, and touch your customers and educate them on what's available. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's also the value that, that the retailer brings. Um, you can make a really compli complicated solution, but if the customer saves a lot of money, they'll <laughs> and then they want to save a lot of money, then that's that's what they'll do. Um, obviously, we, we try and make things a lot easier and integrated a lot better and try and make the experience better and better as we go along. And and, and do you find that, that, that uh, resellers across the board now are really focused on that that customer experience side of it? I mean, we've seen amazing things from the, the financial sector when it comes mm. to developing products and services uh, that suit everybody in South Africa and can be delivered digitally. I mean, are, mm. are you seeing that same kind of uh, effort being put in by retailers? Um, I think retailers are looking, as I mentioned earlier, they're looking at everything. Mm. Um, and so, uh, what I've seen, uh, certain retailers are, are picking up on certain solutions and pushing them through. Um, I think a lot of value-added services are coming in, uh, trying to reduce that friction between your banking and your retail store, mm -hmm. uh, getting money out, uh, that sort of thing. Is, is, is I've definitely seen a, a pickup in the, the retail in my environment, yeah. Yeah, and, and and you mentioned the banks. I mean, presumably they have a role to play in this as, no, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, uh, their infrastructure, uh, their solutions. Uh, I've seen a, a lot of banking institutions building solutions in partnership with with retailers over the last few years, uh, mm -hmm. and it's it's certainly benefited both institutions. Fantastic. And, and have you seen those relationships grow closer during the last the last few months as as people are looking for that right solution I'm, to deal with? I'm seeing, as I mentioned, a lot of interest. So um, uh, it's often uh, it's, it's, it's best kept secrets, uh, the solutions that we all have. And uh, I think that's one nice thing about this, uh, this uh, the, the lockdown period is that it's, it's pushed people to look at solutions uh, that are available. And, and uh, someone once said, uh, uh, in, uh, innovations the, the, the is driven by necessity. And it's, we've definitely seen that. Fantastic. Um, I can see that we're, we're starting to run out of time. We've only got a couple of minutes uh, left before we have to uh, go for a short break. Um, I wonder, I mean, just in, in closing, if there's, if there's one thing that you want the audience to take away from, uh, from this session on the, the future of retail, um, what would it be? A good question. Um, <laughs> Putting you completely on I'd, the spot there. No, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, if I look at uh, the retailers that I currently work with, the relationship that we have with our clients is is definitely important. Understanding the client and the, the market that they're in and their customers and trying to build value and, and solutions that will work well for them has certainly been the most important thing for us in the last few months. Um, uh, and trying to look at solutions that will work well mm -hmm. going forward has, has certainly been something that we, we've been focusing on. Fantastic. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's all we have time for. So uh, just enough time for me to say uh, thank you very much, uh, Miguel Vieira, a Professional Services and Pre-Sales Manager at uh, Altron Managed Solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you.